François Thibault Sisson, from Le Temps. The newspaper? I wrote to you, Monsieur Monet. At least you got my name right. That's a start. I was here on time. I've been right round the garden looking for you. Yeah. Don't look a little red. Almost vermilion. Journalists. <laughs> they all want to know me now. So many interviews and articles. It wasn't always like that. We saw the world afresh, but for a long time, the world didn't seem to understand us. I'm on my own here! <laughs> the Impressionists, they called us. We were painters of water, of light, of color. We were of our own time, yet beyond it. You begin at eight in the morning with drawing from life. Each week, our model adopts a classic pose, and with constant attention, you will start to understand the skills of the old master. I will help you when I come in twice a week to correct your attempts. Uh, when do we paint, Mr. Glare? A beginner first learns drawing, and then how to arrange colors on the palette. Can you paint? I've been here for weeks. I haven't even seen a paintbrush. You'll get used to it. Tell me, Monsieur Monet, whose classic pose is our model taking this week? Titian. Titian. Renoir. Titian, Monsieur Glare. It's a bit dusty in here, sir. My studio. Uh, my studio is out there. You always paint outside. I invented it. They thought we were mad. Who do you mean by we? <laughs> that crowd. I met Renoir and Basile at Glare's Academy. Friends I would never lose sight of. <laughs> My father doesn't believe that being an artist is a proper job. So the agreement is that I attend Glare's Academy or he cuts me off. But doesn't your family realize you're going to be world famous? Yeah, we all are, Basil. They, they want me to take over the family grocery by the sea. You mean you've sacrificed being a grocer? Won't you miss it? I'll miss the sea. And you'll miss the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd have spent my life in La Havre as a caricaturist if it hadn't been for the sea. It makes my head spin. And this is what makes my head spin. I don't know if I would have become an artist if God hadn't created the female breast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hobby for me. I've, uh, I've yet to sit my medical exams. I'm still painting flowers on porcelain vases. I should have been a tailor like my father. That's me? My nose isn't half that big. Oh, it's a beautiful nose. Oh, thank you. So you're a laundress? Since I was ten. Oh, such beautiful hands. <laughs> I used to go to the beach instead of school. I could never stick to the rules, even then. There was something so vivid, something, once I found it, 
that set the course of the rest of my life. So, your inspiration came from nature, not from other artists. The inspiration is no good on its own. Uh, it's like sugar. To make the best of it, you have to put it with something else. <laughs> I like mine with my chocolate in the morning. Yeah, or plums, even tomatoes. Sometimes you need a bit of a jolt. Well, who gave you a jolt? Uh, different people, different times. All dead now. Who kept you going, then, when you first arrived in Paris? Renoir and Basile. And someone else, who I didn't get to know for a while. I knew his work. Everything we thought of as new started with him. When I looked at Manet's work, one world ended and another began. The women in his paintings were unconventional. His great muse was Victorine Meurant. Look at me, Victorine. Straight at me. Turn your face towards me and look at me. You're not going to paint me looking straight out the canvas, are you? I'm a god. There are cherubs circling my head. This is Paris in 1862. Only one of those is true. This is Paris and it's 1862. <laughs> this is how we live now. Is this what growing up in a house of Puritans has done to you? <laughs> Most probably. What did you think about my picture? I retouched it. I asked your opinion. My opinion was that I needed retouching. Would you retouch a digger? No, because it would be an insult. You're just starting out. I mean, you're not master, are you? I'm master of your time while you're in my studio. Can I rest a moment? No. My back is stiff. Look at me, Victorine. Look at my face. You can remember what I look like for a few minutes. I can't. I can only paint what I see. The peaches aren't going to last, but that's peaches for you. <laughs> Suzanne was his anchor. They married around this time. It's three o'clock. Has he given you any lunch? No. Well, then he shouldn't blame you if you eat his props. He does the same to me when I sit for him. You must be cold. Manet used to say his battlefield was a salon, the state-run art exhibition. Unfortunately for him, the salon wanted artists who would help build the French Empire. Myths, angels and glory. History paintings with a fine finish. Art hand in hand with politics, doing its bit for Emperor Louis Napoleon. Sadly, the Salon's yearly exhibition was our only real hope of getting work seen and sold. It was presided over by the Marquis de Chenevière. His dead hand passed over all the canvases of all the artists who submitted. Gentlemen, a Venus by Cabernet. Louis Napoleon is considering purchasing this for his collection. Look how it swells. Real ambrosian purple. Beautifully finished. Very subtle shade on the nipples. By one of our meddled artists, so, um, no vote to be taken. Good God. Who produced this monstrosity? Hmm? Why has he done this? This painter is a degenerate. It looks like he's painted it with a scrubbing brush. It has no anatomical structure. The world looks... This painting makes us savages. One would think our great history of art never happened. Refused. So many paintings were refused that year. So many artists complained that the Emperor announced an exhibition of all the rejected works. When Paris heard there was a painting of a naked concubine sitting in the woods with a couple of young dandies, well, we all came to see. She's not nude, she's naked. Flesh is so white. There's no perspective. And her suits are so dark. It doesn't look finished. So simple. You can see the brush strokes on the canvas. 
Such broad areas of light. Such attention to nature. She's staring at us. You can see what they had for lunch. It's our world. It's painted our world. When I looked at Dejeuner, I saw the very thing I had been moving towards. Not ancient Rome or ancient Greece or Mount Olympia, but Paris. painted a naked concubine with her clothes in a heap on the floor next to her. That's what I want to paint, the girl. The men in the salon find it hard to admit that women undress in life, let alone in art. So do you think the salon officials all have mistresses? They all have mistresses, and they probably all visit courtesans. But they don't want to see it in an art gallery. It's certainly given me a good kicking for it. Socrates said when he was insulted, why should I resent it when an ass kicks me? Paris is full of asses who won't let me paint what I see. Because they don't want what you see, they want Venus. I see Victorine. They're not ready for you. When will they be ready? I'd say not for a while. You can lead an ass to water, Manet, but you cannot make it think. <laughs> With friends like Edgar Duggar, Manet didn't need enemies. <laughs> Art. Art is the capacity to take pains. Monet, I was just examining the texture of his skin. It's not bad. But it's, 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 too, it's too much like the model. You have stocky man. You, you, you draw him stocky. He has enormous feet. You reproduce them. It's very ugly. In drawing, one must always think of the antique. I prefer to work from nature. Nature is a means to an end. A, a masterpiece borrows from a, a hundred imperfect models. For me, nature is an end in itself. Nobody's interested in nature. The man has got big feet. Art's been around a damn sight longer than you, and it isn't going to change overnight. Well, it certainly isn't going to here. Because you think we should all draw a man with big feet. And if we do, we will all draw him differently. And his feet will be different, just as we are all different, and the world is different in every moment of every day. Style is what matters. Style, style, style. I want reality. Reality has no place in my studio. I've just seen the future. Do you know something? You're not in it. No doubt you paint to have fun, Renoir. If it wasn't fun, Monsieur Glare, I wouldn't do it. Nothing that makes me feel. Nothing that art is for me even exists for Glare. I'm very happy with him. I can't stay with him. Well, I think most of the other students are happy. Well, the other students are just a lot of grocer's assistants. Oh, no. I can't stay there. Oh, it's like rising from the dead day after day. I say we don't go back. Hold on, let's think about it. If we can't paint what well, we were born to paint, we might as well be doctors and tailors. At least then we'd be doing something real. No, I think we should go back. Never. We will never, ever go back there. Of course, I did go back, only to complete what I was working on. I was impatient to be out there, in the light. I wanted to be my own master. I found myself penniless, but was ready to hurl myself recklessly into the open air. Are we nearly there yet? Just a bit further. It's getting very dense. You think Spates into a trick over Manet's déjeuner? A rubbish. It was a studio creation. No one has ever started and completed a painting outdoors before. Well, that's because it would take most painters two years to complete one. And they'd die of cold. Look. There. 
see how the light falls through the leaves onto the forest floor. And the leaves against the sky. No one can tell me that there is no colour in shadow. When I have stood here and seen it and painted it for myself. <laughs> Thank you. New colours. New studio. Look better with a couple of figures in it. People are far too distracted. Of course, there were hidden dangers in the forest. Oh, we've captured the leaves very well. Can we go home now? He was the All England Discus Champion. Would you believe that? In the middle of the Fontainebleau forest. <laughs> Did that roast beef have to come with us? can do in a time of crisis. Make sure that I look really ill. Use cobalt blue and cadmium orange for the bruise. Painting is a dangerous occupation, especially when you don't sell. I'd nearly lost my leg. I was starving and homeless. Life's more fun when you have to worry about money, Monet. That is not the same thing to say, Lenoir. It stirs you up. Well, then you'll be delighted to know that no one wants us to do their portraits. How? Oh. What about that doctor friend of yours? He can't even force his friends to have their portraits done. He wouldn't have to. I could hold him down and you could paint him. Basil will look after us. He'll give you his bed. He might give it to you. He'll give it to you. He might keep it for himself. <laughs> you think he's still got that bag of beans? Well, only luck he'll have finished them by now. Please, God, let there be meat. <laughs> Make yourselves at home, gentlemen. Oh. Renoir, you can sleep here. You can have the bedroom. What about you? I'll take the chaise long. Are you sure? Oh, what are friends for? Oh, well, it's only for a short while. I'm delighted to have you here, both of you. It's like an infirmary in here. Beans, gentlemen. 
Oh, I had beans last night. Oh, and you'll have beans tonight until that sack runs out. And then we'll have lentils. I have plenty of paint. And beans. And logs for the fire. And beans. If the first one up in the morning can start the fire, I'll make breakfast. Monet. Hang on. What happened to your limb? <coughs> oh. Now there's a hunger no amount of beans can satisfy. Who is she? No idea. As far as Paris is concerned, this will be seen as more of a crime than a creation. I don't paint nimini pimini daubs, Degas. This painting is alive. Olympia is alive. Where's your veil of mythology? He didn't give her one. That, my dear, is quite apparent. Here is a modern Olympia. Ah, Olympia. You won't find her in mythology or antiquity. I know exactly where you'll find her. I could tell you what door to knock on. What's that? Black cat. Beelzebub himself. I needed a touch of black. Well, Titian's Venus has a lapdog, mine has a cat. A lapdog doesn't signify anything sordid. The salon will have a field day. Where on earth did he pick up this yellow bellied odalisk? And he has the gall to call her Olympia. Thank God I didn't bring my wife. When art stoops this low, senses do good for it. A puny model laid out on a sheet. Who couldn't move her arms and legs if she wanted to. The least woman has bones and muscles and uh, skin. Some sort of colour, but it must. He's trying to do something else. Something else that isn't art. It is art about real people and, and real things. You may be the art critic, Duranti, but as far as I am concerned, reality and art are two very different things. You'll have to be moved. Don't take it off. You'll suffocate. What are you doing under there? Protecting my head from the insults that are beating down on me like hail. I knew this would happen. I didn't. Well, you said you didn't care what people thought. I didn't know it would be this bad. They were attacking the painting with umbrellas. I know. I should roll up my canvases and put them in the ashes. You can't do that. Let you. you can't stop me. Yes, I can. It was a shock. The vitriol they unleashed on him. For a painting. But people had never seen anything like it. A prostitute. Staring at them so brazenly from the canvas. You think that gave them the right to drive him out of the country? You're an art critic. It was shocking. He left the country, fled to Spain. Really? Thought he'd taken a trip to look at Velasquez and Goya. I thought you'd come to ask me about my life and my friends. If you think you know about my life better than I do, why don't you write it and let me get on with living it? You've got to face facts, you're not going to get it finished. It's as big as the side of a house. What am I going to do? What do you think? It's not your colour. <laughs> I'm going to do a family group on a terrace. I've hired this for one of the women. Why are you on the floor? Who is this man? Dishevelled and motionless, lying on the floor for hours without moving. He is an artist. I'm finished. Metaphorically rather than literally. The salon deadline's in four days. You'll have nothing to enter. I wondered if you'd come. Oh, 
Why wouldn't I? I thought maybe I dreamed our meeting in the street. Well, perhaps you did. Perhaps you're dreaming this too. I hope not. You're far too lovely to be just a figment of the artist's mind. Is this your studio? It's a friend's. He lets me borrow it. And his paint. So you're not a very successful artist then? Not yet. I haven't done this before. Do you want me to sit somewhere? Just as you are. I've got my back to you. Put your hand back where it was. I'm afraid I'm going to keep you standing there for quite some time. I thought we might like a little plum brandy. Thank you. Homemade. Mm. I accept all this will become just a story. A story with its own momentum. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Mm. You reach a point in your life where all those around you start to die. It happens. And as they die, they leave you the odd canvas. A keepsake. They leave their children. And their stories. It'll happen to you. Dress by the sun. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes! <laughs> Captain Fano. Yes. Congratulations. It's a masterpiece. Bravo. Thank you. I don't have anything in this here. Money, 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 money. For the first time in my life, I'm being congratulated for a painting at the Salon. But I didn't think you have one in this year. I haven't. It's some sort of hoax. Some idiot whose name sounds like mine. Who is this Monet who's taking advantage of my notoriety? I very much wanted to meet Manet. I was sure we would understand each other. I saw a kindred spirit. He saw someone with a maliciously similar name. He thought I'd somehow taken something from him, and I had. But not in the way he thought. I'd taken strength from him, inspiration. Because of my name, that one letter's difference. The very last person who would ever want to upset him had made him desperately unhappy. Why have you done nothing to halt the flow of mud that comes at me continually? I, I, I write about your work. This latest piece, about the, the Plus Vendôme exhibition. This is what you write about my paintings. Monsieur Manet showed a philosopher trampling oyster shells and a watercolour of his Christ with angels. <laughs> well, that's not bad. It's not anything! My work has been called ugly, then vulgar, inconsistent, naive. And in the face of this, I've continued to paint and try to make my voice heard. You know I need all the help I can get. 
Oh, I may not survive this. You, you know that, Durante. I have supported you in the face of outrage. I've supported you to the public and to the marquee. I have never written anything negative about your work. There, there's no need to take offence. Will you apologise? Of course he wouldn't. He was frustrated. And because he wasn't as brave as he thought he was, took it out not on his enemies, but on one of his friends. Sorry. It's fine. I'm fine. It wasn't the best or most polite of duels, but blood was drawn, honor was satisfied. <laughs> and the story of Manet's dueling with Durante became something of a legend. I confess the painting that held my attention longest is Woman in a Green Dress. It speaks volumes to me about energy and truth. Neil Zola. Ah. Right, more champagne. I'm buying. Uh, you haven't sold the painting yet. No, but I've just sold another one for 800 francs. Well, you will have spent that by the end of the evening. Could all be downhill from here? All uphill. To hills. Up or down. Hills. Hills. Money. Introduce me, Pazza. He hates you. He hates my name. You don't make things any worse. They can't get any worse. He nearly killed Durante. They could get a lot worse. Mr. Monet, may I introduce you to a very dear friend of mine? Claude Monet. Very much wanted to meet you, sir. The future of art owes so much to you. And the present. The present and the future. You paint a woman in a green dress. Yes, I did. A fine painting. So fine it was mistaken for one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> May I join you? Of course, please, please, please have my chair. Finally, I had met him. And I was not disappointed. But just as everything was fitting into place, I received news which would change my life. Camille, I will help out with whatever money I can. We will be together. It's not possible. If I stay with you, my father will cut me off. I'll get nothing. Because that's what I'm worth. No. Because I'm not good enough for you. Of course you're good enough. You're more than good enough. But we need money. I stood there in that green dress for four days and you needed a painting for the salon. I was there when you needed me. Are you going to recognize this child? Because if you don't, Claude, nothing left to say to each other. Claude? I returned to La Havre to spend some time with my father. Sorry, what was I saying? 
about your family. He was saying you returned to the coast so you could spend some time with your family. I'm sorry, I'm making you tired. Oh, no, no, no. you're making me remember. family have been very good to me. They're in raptures in my every brushstroke. What if she dies? What about the... What about the baby? It's due on the 8th. My father has asked me to abandon her. He says that I should know what she's worth and what she deserves. Well, what does she deserve? It's impossible without my father's support. What if I were to buy one of your paintings? Women in the garden. I'll pay you in installments, 50 francs a month. That's very kind of you. Things don't always work out the way we want them to, do they? More often than not, the odds are stacked against us. That doesn't seem to stop us going after them. They're impossible dreams. They're impossible dreams. By buying my painting, Basile enabled me to do the right thing. Camille? 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 I've got work to do. I went to your rooms. I have to do the washing. I'm sorry. Come back. It was the best and the worst thing I could have done. My family cut my allowance just as they said they would. The money from the paintings I'd sold had gone. Camille gave birth to a big and beautiful boy, Jean. We couldn't afford to stay in Paris anymore. We drifted from place to place, sometimes not knowing where we'd stay that night, completely reliant on those few francs from Basile. I spent my days painting out of doors, watching my baby become a boy. It must have looked idyllic. My dear little family, the river, the light. But not everything was as it seemed. You don't know what money is until you don't have it. You don't know what a family is until you do. Paris seemed a very long way away. Everyone was still there, struggling as ever to sell their paintings. Morning. Oh, good morning. Ha ha! Bonnie. Ha ha. How's my godson? He's got a bruise on his head the size of a billiard ball. Yeah, upholding the Monet tradition of trying to run before he can walk. <laughs> More coffee? Yes. I'm not saying come and see flawless works. I'm saying come and see sincere works. Have you hired a gallery? I've erected a store. He's erected a pavilion. Attempting something new in art would always be a struggle. I accept that. But my works should at least be shown. Mm. If the salons so often reject me, I must take the matter into my own hands. How do people like it? People don't like it at all. 
Even if you sold every single painting, you'd still make a loss. Your mother won't like it when she realizes she's not going to see her 18,000 francs again. 18,000? You'd do the same if you could afford it. I'm happy merely to work. In the morning, I bathe, I put on my 9 franc 50 dressing gown, <laughs> and I say to myself, this is the life of the worker. Workers don't wear floral dressing gowns. Well, it depends what sort of workers they are. <laughs> <laughs> Work is the sole refuge. Cézanne! Do you know everybody? Manet? May I introduce Monsieur Paul Cézanne? Edouard Manet. I would shake your hand, but I, I, haven't, I haven't washed for a week. Only a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, people say that a sugar basin has no face, has no soul. <laughs> Even those glasses are talking amongst themselves. <laughs> Unfortunately, the man is as incomprehensible to me as his work. Oh, he finds company rather hard. Not as hard as he finds painting. <laughs> <laughs> We knew what we wanted to do, paint real life in the open air. And if we didn't know how to achieve what our instincts told us, we were sustained by each other's enthusiasm. I heard that men and women are allowed to swim together at that climate. I didn't say I was going to paint them. Do they wear clothes? You're about to find out. Well, as long as I can wear clothes. Oh, you have to leave them at the station. Didn't you know? They give you a locker to put them in. <laughs> what? I see life, people, and their stories. What about you? I see a square of blue and an oblong of pink. And a dozen models eager to be studied. <laughs> and a light dancing on the ripples of the water. Life as it's being lived, right in front of our eyes, exactly as we see it. That's what we paint. No, I do. I think we've really done something. You know, we can never go back from this moment. You're stopping. I'm stopping. Don't say it isn't finished. It's complete. That's a manly piece of painting. <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes. Open them. What do you see? A bunch of flowers, I think. Close your eyes. Open. Purple flowers, the yellow flowers. No, 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 close them. Keep them closed. What's really there? Balls of colour. Yellow. 
purple, green. That was La Grenouillère. I looked nature in the eyes and I saw her clearly as she was on that day in that place for the very first time. Is this what you called impressionism? Uh, by nature, yes, but not yet by name. That's what I saw. We captured the world. And with it, somewhere on the canvas, amidst the colors and the layers, what Renoir would have called our destiny. Yes, there's no need to actually play it. I'm doing a painting of the executioner of Emperor Maximilian of Mexico with the executioners in French army uniforms. The executioners were Mexican. As far as I'm concerned, our great emperor Napoleon III was responsible. He put him on the Mexican throne and when things dragged on, he abandoned him. Edouard, you're shouting. Sorry. You must be careful. These are dangerous times. All my working life, I've been told what I should and shouldn't paint, where and what I can exhibit. How can there be art when there's no truth? They censored him completely. Not only did they refuse to exhibit the painting, they even banned any prints being made of it. He was like a signpost for us, showing us the way. It's just ridiculous for an intelligent person to expose himself to the administrative caprice of the salon year after year. I mean, especially when awards and medals hold absolutely no interest at all. Mm, but what choice have we got? We send a word to the salon because we have to, not because we want to. When there isn't anywhere else to send it. I've had one piece accepted. That's all. Ever. You're right. We make no money. We have no success. We end up alone, with no outlet for our work, just like Manet says. We should have our own exhibition like Manet. Manet's was a disaster. It doesn't matter. You, Renoir, myself, Degas, Cezanne, Manet. Let's rent a studio where we can exhibit all the works we want. Hang them just as we like. And who's going to pay for it? Manet's mother? I'll speak to my family. Really? We're a very attractive proposition. Are we? It will be a huge success. <laughs> Everything was changing. Just when it seemed we had found our way. We had no idea. There we go, go, go. The little marionette. There we go, go. Camille and I were married. It was 1870, June 1870. We went on our honeymoon to Trouville. Then war broke out. Nothing would be the same again. Louis Napoleon declared war on Prussia. What happened so suddenly? All my friends, everyone, dashing off in different directions. You're an idiot. Have you even thought about this at all? I have. What if you get killed? Huh? Have you thought about that? Of course I have. But most likely the war will be over in a couple of weeks. You don't know that! Unless we want the Kaiser to take over our land, someone's got to go and fight. Not you! It's in my interest to defend France. I shouldn't expect other people to do it for me. Why do you always have to do the honourable thing? Why can't you just let somebody else do it for once? Don't be angry with me. With Paris under siege, Degas and Manet enlisted as gunners in the National Guard. It's talked that the Prussians are closing in on Paris. They'll probably starve us out. Be that of the smallpox. I don't know if I can bear it, Degas. Sending boys into battle. Boys. It's so deathly sad. I've got this at the butcher's. What is it, horse? 
All the horses have been eaten. It's rat. When all this is over, we can serve it up to the cowards who left. It wasn't that I wanted to leave my friends to it. And it wasn't just me. Plenty of people left. I wanted to look after my family. That's who I wanted to protect. Camille and Jean joined me in England, where I'd found a summer to live. Look, Jean, this is England. <laughs> in London, I was fascinated by the ever-changing shades of grey. Too many to mix on one palette. No country could be more extraordinary for an artist. I often thought of my friends back in France. Poor Renoir was conscripted and fell very ill with dysentery. Basile was posted to Burgundy. My father went to Burgundy to collect the body. Goated on Basile. Found his son's corpse in a ditch. Twenty-nine. Very first day I met Basile, he was a true friend. Gave what he had. Would have made a name for himself. And then we find our subject again. We return. As we travel, we return. What do you return to? Light on water, clouds and sky. For years we'd struggle for something. And just when we thought our time was coming, it seemed we had even further to go. <laughs> Monsieur, I'm the artist Claude Monet. I would like to paint your station. <laughs> I don't think so. You have no future. They said we were declaring war on beauty. We need the salon. How else do you sell your paintings? I say we start a fire. An exhibition of our own. With no jury, no marquee. We paint what we want, we sell what we can. Jean, please! I can see it already. The colours, lights. This will be my finest painting yet. <laughs> Usually when I do that, the gentleman stares at my body. You never know when to stop. Your talent, your gift, you must do it justice. 
You think I should paint like Monet? Dash them off in the blink of an eye. Dugger. Eyes that way. I love my family. Love and there is work and we have but one heart. No, I'll take her home. I'll take the children. No one should suffer like that. Camille. Thank you.